us, it's recording. Uh, this is the first lecture of Computer Programming B. And I want to point you all, so if you're following along, most of this stuff is going to happen in Trinket today. Trinket's our main website. We're doing most of our development on here because it's um, all on the web browser. So you can go home, you don't need to download anything, you just sign in on Trinket into your account, and you can code away with Python. For those that had me last semester, we're no longer using CodePen because it doesn't offer the option of um, Python. And right now on my screen, I'm navigating to the course webpage. And if I uh, wasn't cheap about it, I would be paying Trinket.io to make little assignments on here and not have to use Google Classroom. But I am cheap. Uh, I have not secured any funds to pay for each student a certain amount to get that feature. Thus, we work with um, only the free features. Yeah, that's that's why you only see like some assignments on here, some on Google Classroom. I'm trying to make do with uh, everything that's um, free. So one way I'm working with that is just having a blog um, on this class website. Uh, are you able to access this when you go to my course page? I know a lot of you have seen my favorite cat, Garfield. And so you must have found this somewhere. I'm trying to reorganize it um, with a page each day to summarize what I want to talk about. Yeah? Just in case I mess, mess up with my actual lecture. Um, last night I found it hard to fall asleep because winter break is just two weeks is just long enough to build bad habits and then suddenly I'm back in school and my sleeping schedule is all kinds of crazy. So um, I was awake and I thus did some... Uh, uh, what's it called, um, typing onto the screen, and here's a bunch of stuff that uh, I wanted to cover today. And you can give a read through that on some nuances, and I'm pretty much going to walk through this and then cover some more stuff if possible. Okay, next up. So with this turtle, I'm going to pull up the resource we've been using about Hello Turtle, uh, Hello Little Turtles, up on the uh, one of our main textbook, and I say textbooks up in quotes because this is just an interactive like web page that has a bunch of text and videos and little Python programs for you to run. We're currently in chapter four called Turtle Graphics, and the main motivation behind this is I wanted to show you some cool things, but I also wanted to give you uh, like a limited amount of tools, so I wanted to see how you would respond and work with these uh, turtle functions to make neat images. And for those that had me last semester, we start visual, and this time it's the same thing. We're going to make a turtle help us make national flags. And so far, I hope you noticed that, like, let's see, with Python, here's an example of a Python code uh, segment. It makes a turtle and then colors some blue things. So one thing that's really important about Python is you'll know that um, there are no semicolons back here. If I put a semicolon, for example, in this program in line 12, the whole box is red, and when I click run, it's going to tell me, oh, it still decides to run. Okay, well, uh, I didn't expect that, and uh, the that's going to happen a lot. But um, you don't need to put semicolons there, and it's okay. Uh, but let's say you have something like this, right? I have test.left, and I d deleted that enter, and I run this. It should, OK, it still decides to work. Great. I want to break you. There, I got my error. OK, see, this is why I wanted to demonstrate. So test.left is right here. It's going to turn 120 degrees, and then I did space test forward. In JavaScript, and maybe even in Java, if you had these lines together, it would work. But in Python, it is super space sensitive. So having that white space there means that it's trying to read and trying to do test.left, parentheses, 120, space, test.forward, parentheses, 50, all at the same time. And it says, syntax error, bad input, which means, oh, you, did spe you, you spelled something wrong. You put things in the wrong spot. And you should, um, that's one of the features of Python. Sometimes uh, software engineers call bugs features and just make it a thing and then charge you money for it. Um, it's not the case with Python, because as this is a feature of the language, you'll notice as it's different than Java and JavaScript. Python is a, one of the language programming languages that's most closest to natural language. And that means uh, the kind of language that we talk with, like English. As we read it, it's more intuitive and it hopefully makes a bit more sense. And it, Python as a language values that very highly. That's why it uses um, white space sensitively. That also means that 
let's say you are doing later on, I'm going to scroll down to a different example. You are doing, let's say you've gotten after a while very tedious and you're like repeating things over and over again and you notice yourself copy and pasting, um, that's a good time for a for loop. And I want to pull up a for loop example. So notice here, this kind of syntax, this kind of spelling. Two things are um, new here. The for loop looks really different. But right now I just want you to focus on the for loop, uh, the white space that's here. Notice this part. Okay, there's one, two, three, four spaces. This part really matters. If let's say you have if statements, uh, function definitions, for loops, all these different blocks of code, all these different code segments, you need to pay attention to this indentation. Because that's going to affect how your program runs. In this example, this for loop, even though we are not that familiar with the syntax, um, this comment over here really helps us. Commenting is code that uh, is written for us for readability purposes to explain what the heck's going on. It says repeat four times, and that's what this loop does. It goes to zero, goes to one, goes to two, goes to three, and then Alex goes forward 50 pixels and then rotates 90 degrees. Uh, let's see what happens, and oh, it draws a neat little square. If you didn't have these indentations here, if you didn't have these white spaces, it's going to perform something different. Let's say we did something like that. Alex dot forward 50. Now I deleted that white space along uh, line 6, and I click run, and we go down. It says error. Syntax error again. Bad input on line 6. We've broken our function. So be careful with that. And I'll add another comment. White space is super important. While we're talking about commenting, you should know that doing multi-line comments in Java that looked like uh, doing one of these slash stars and then doing one of these star slashes to close your paragraph or whatever you type, you tell the computer to ignore whatever is between here. In JavaScript, we used, uh, someone remind me, what was the multi-line comment? Yes, uh, yeah, single line is slash slash in JavaScript, it does slash slash, but I'm, I'm, I'm blanking. JavaScript, right, uh, that, yeah. And also, JavaScript does this star slash. So instead of doing that, and you wanted to write something longer, maybe you wanted to bl um, blank out different parts of your code, instead of doing a bunch of these, uh, I, so I call these pound symbols, because that's what they, that's what the, telephone operator tells you, um, or the number sign, and this generation calls it hashtag. Um, so instead of doing that um, on a bunch of lines of code, you can draw either single quotation marks like this, or double quotation marks. And that's the key above the slash, around, enter, and shift on most keyboards. That is a multi-line comment, like so. Yeah. Questions so far? No? All right. So then I, I go back and it's like, what do I want to talk about next? No semicolons. And then, ah, another new thing. And perhaps you have not done so uh, already. So Python is something called uh, a dynamically typed uh, language. You don't need to do var anymore for using variables. You don't need to do int for those familiar with Java, float, double, char, none of those. You just type x and you do equals and you set the um, whatever variable equal to whatever you want it to be. And I give you some examples here. x here is a thousand, s is a string here, that's a, this is also a variable, and f for like float is um, a couple of digits of pi. That's pretty nice. And for those that, had me last semester. I didn't talk about data types, and I will be after I'm done talking about a couple things in this um, chapter four about the um, turtle module. Go on, go on, go on. Okay. Then I turn your attention here, and this part is uh, a bit more fun. So, oops, oops, no, no, stop, stop, stop. You're ruining, ruining the excitement. So, here is a short example that I pulled from your textbook, and I wanted us to code together something interesting. I wanted to emphasize, like, for your national flags, I imagine, let's say you choose, like, the United States, you've got to draw 50 stars. And no way are you going to 
Uh, for those that figure it out how to draw a physical star, the only way you're going to copy and paste that star uh, 50 times and adjust its x or y coordinate ever so slightly, um, that's way too much work. That's why you're going to use this for loop to repeat that code. And I wanted to show you an example of how it works. For now, we're going to block out the later one down here. And we're just going to focus our attention on these two for loops up here, from lines 4 down to line 11. And this is the program listed on the blog on the um, Trinket uh, course web page. Here, we're going to first notice this should be familiar. Those that uh, took Java, took principles, you should have seen this for loop. Those that had me last semester, less so. But Python makes it so that it should still make sense to you. You have four. You have um, a variable here that takes on different values. In, and here is a list, otherwise known as an array. Um, although the two are different, for now I'm using them the same thing. This, so i goes from 0 to 3. So i in this first uh, loop starts at 0, it makes Alex go forward, turns 90, does it again, does it again, does it again. And we see that square. Here's the new part, and for those that are working with colors, Python for loops are super flexible. You can type in words in here. So now with this one, you'll notice it's going to go through and change those different colors. It's going to go from red to green to blue to orange. It's still going to do that forward 50 pixels and turning uh, left 90 degrees, so we're still going to see that square. And when we press, oh no, I broke it. No EOF, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I go back. Um, I slightly panicked a bit, but I am okay, because I know what I'm doing. Oh no. I... <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, it happens to all of us, uh, demonstrating um, important things to have. Uh, okay, so it makes a circle, and notice with this one it goes from, stop, okay. It goes from uh, red to green, red to green to blue to yellow. So you can try iterating through different colors if you want to repeat that. It not only works with numbers, it also works with words. And then secondly, I wanted to show you another example here. So this for loop uses the range function. Let's say that you don't want to type out your list from like 30 up to 100. You can use this nifty range function that forms that list for you. And what do I mean by that? Um, forms it for us. So here's something I want to show you. Um, in Okay, look at it go. Let's do its thing. So the for loop here just makes this turtle um, go faster and faster until it reaches maximum speed and then it just kind of goes in the loop and then stops, right? I want to point you to the console. So wherever you're at with your national flag, I do ask that all of you take a look at the console. When you click, let's say, you click on run usually, underneath the little triangle that says run, below it is console. Click on that and pull that up. And that's where your program is being run. That's where you see your turtle being executed. And if your program's running, you see these three dots? It means it's running your Python code and we'll wait till it's done. And now you'll see three arrows that are pointing right here, these three arrows. This is a really neat feature of Python. Python is called an interpreted language. For those familiar with Java, um, you have to compile in Java. You have to make class files, object files, and then the compiler like stitches them all together, and then you can run your program. Um, you'll notice like if you did asteroids uh, in particular, you had all those different files. And then you have to tell the computer, put these together, and now do that. In Python, and also in JavaScript, you don't need to do that. It just goes and reads all your code and knows exactly what to do. So here, for example, we can type in x equals 10, and we, you can test to see what's x's value. x is 10. Let's test out that range function we were just talking about. 30 to 100. I want to see what this does. If I press enter after typing that in, you'll see that list of 70 numbers being generated. Let's say we wanted to do some addition. I've lost my handy dandy scientific calculator or my very expensive graphing calculator, TI-1023 or whatever, and I have forgotten how to add 3 plus 3. Uh, do not worry. Your Python, uh, I made it too big. Uh, Python, uh, I made it too small. Uh, Python <laughs> can save you. 3 plus 3, press enter. You get 6. You can do um, subtraction. It gives you negative numbers. You can do a whole bunch of other stuff. Let's say, ah, 
And here's something that's new. Let's say you wanted to do exponential. If you were familiar with calculator, you'd use the caret, but that doesn't, it does mean something. But it doesn't work as exponentiation. To do exponentiation, you need two stars, and that gives you eight. Um, other things that are cool here, let's say we wanted to experiment with uh, printing. That's going to be useful. If your program calls print for debugging purposes, uh, you should go experiment with that. Let's say we print some um, value that um, doesn't currently exist, and we say print um, variable y. And you get an error, because we haven't given anything of the value y. y equals 11, and now we can print out y. We can do print y like that. Oh, yeah. Neat. OK, any questions so far? Console super useful. And then um, at this point, did I cover everything? Yes. OK, so this is now begins a transition from like a, a pretty big transition from uh, what I was doing last semester. And this goes to the students that had me last semester. Um, I'm going to be using more formal language, and it's going to get more and more technical this semester. You've done all of these programs, did little games, did little graphics, and now I want you to be able to describe that with academic computer science language. Cool. Um, this is uh, largely what you'll see in college when you get there in AP Java. You've already talked about most of these things. The first topic we talk about, we've got to go back way to the basics, is the types of variables. In JavaScript, we just called everything a var. But there's actually different kinds of data. For example, one is a certain type. What kind of type is it? Well, Python has this type function. It is of class int. I'll make this way bigger, I think, or I'll try. All right there. It is of type int. Int stands for integer. And that's just like your integers from math class. Integers are any whole number from uh, positive or negative. Type of negative one is also an integer. But that means that uh, rational numbers, otherwise known as decimals, those are of a different type. They're called floats. And really, the difference is your computer stores that differently. Um, if you look down at like the uh, memory and the hardware and how it's stored. Other types, strings, otherwise known as like sentences or list of words. So you can spell Mr. Chan. List of words. That's the str, which stands for string. Uh, type, array. This is a list. There's a whole bunch of these different data types. And um, this is stuff you'll see on quizzes, but later on you'll see, depending on the language, that you can't always mix types with others. What's an example of this? Let's say you wanted to do 3 divided by 2. It gives you 1.5. Let's say you wanted to do that special kind of division. Uh, for example, 3, and then we talked about this percent sign. Anyone remember what that stands for? Yeah, Thomas? Yep, mod, and over there we got it too. It stands for mod, otherwise known as remainder. Perhaps 5 mod 3, 5 divided by 3 um, goes in once, and then you have 2 left over. It's the remainder function. Here's something neat. 5 double slash is a different kind of um, division. It gives you uh, 1 in this case. Let's say we did 6 divided by 1, it gives us 6. 7 divided by 2, it gives us um, 3. What do you think? Two slashes means, Claire, I mean student. How many times it Yeah, just the integer part. So mod is the remainder, and then um, this double slash operator is called integer division. Let's say you did something like this. 4.5 double slash 2 gives you 2.0. You're dividing a float, a decimal, by an integer. You get back a decimal answer. Notice it doesn't lob off anything. There is an example, and I can't seem to pull it up right now, where if you divide, a, the, which one was it? Integer by integer, 10 divided by 9? No, 10 divided by 10. 1.0 times 2, 2 times 1. So notice this part. It's a very subtle difference, but it's these tiny details that um, you should be picking up on. Right up here, I did 1.0. I did a little star that stands for multiplication, I did times 2. 
it gives us 2.0. But suddenly, if I drop off that 0, .0 and I did um, 2 times 1, otherwise it's known as 1 times 2, it gives us just 2. Let's check those types. And this matters, however small it is. So 2.0 uh, times 1 gives us, a, and that's the answer. You saw that decimal point. It's a float. And now here, if you did 2 divided by 1, 2 integers divided by each other gets you the, well, also a float. Python, why you got to be like that? I thought you were going to give something else. OK. So that's pretty much the end of my talking at you, Computer Programming B. Know that there's a difference amongst the variables that you do, although we don't declare them. Under the hood for the computer, there is a difference. And that's the first thing. Integers, floats, which are what we call decimals, otherwise known as rational numbers. Um, strings, um, there's lists, and a couple other things. And that's all. Final questions? Yeah, Justin. Type, right. So type, this function tells you the data type. And that's formally everything. They're more specific things than just variables. There's the integer variable, string variables, and they're all slightly different. They represent different types of data. That's the key takeaway from this first part. And I've shown you the console. Um, it's located here. We're used to seeing pictures. Console's really useful for playing around with specifically uh, different functions. Yep. Other questions? Okay, I stopped.